Praise the Lord, everybody. It's Sunday afternoon. Time for the word. Come on in the house. Let's enter into praise and worship together. Hallelujah. The Lord is my light, salvation. Whom shall I fear? Whom shall I be afraid? The Lord is my light, salvation. Whom shall I fear? Whom shall I be afraid? I will wait on you. I will trust in you. Come on, let's sing. Whom? Whom shall? Oh, the Lord. Whom shall? Come on, sing. I will wait. Wait on the Lord. So shall you be established. I will trust in the Lord with all your heart. I will trust in you. Hallelujah. The Lord, I will remain confident in this. I will see the goodness of the Lord. Yes. Confident. Hallelujah. Bless his name. Come on, let's enter into praise and worship. Who? You are the God. Oh, Lord. Who? Bless your wonderful name. of the Lord I will comfort it I will see the goodness of the Lord come on everybody lift those hands give God some praise and honor and glory on this afternoon our trust is in the Lord who made the heavens and the earth. Bless that wonderful name. Hallelujah. We praise your name. Oh, we set our hope on you. You're the everlasting God. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Sing. We set our hope. Yes, Lord. Come on, sing it with us. You are the everlasting God. You are the everlasting God. Yeah. Set your hope on things above. Yes, indeed. You are the everlasting God. Sing it with us. You're worthy. You're the one who made the heavens and the earth. Hallelujah. You're the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. You're everlasting. Hallelujah. You're worthy, God. Yes, Lord. Lord, you're the 
everlasting God. You're the everlasting God. Oh, your hope, I hope, it's set on the everlasting God. Yes, it is. Place your hope in Him today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. You're the one, you are the one. You're the everlasting God. You ain't nobody do us like Jesus. Hallelujah. Lift those hands. Give them honor. Yes, indeed. Hallelujah. Yes, you do. You place your trust in him. He won't be for naught. Because he's everlasting. He's never changing. No. Oh. I will remain confident in this. I will see the goodness of the Lord. I will Confident, I will see the goodness of the Lord. Hallelujah. I will remain confident in this. I will see the goodness of the Lord. Hallelujah. We bless his wonderful name. Is that your testimony this afternoon? Are you putting your trust in him? Good afternoon, Church One Charlotte. This is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it, yes. Oh, God bless you. Thank God for you being with us this afternoon. Praise God for you, trusty Rodney Thompson. Missionary Jackie Jackson, amen. Missionary Marion Williams. Minister Lexi Evans, amen. Deacon Lamar Evans. Pastor Larry Brown, Brother Tim Hinton. God bless you all. Good to see you. Who else do we have in the house? Amen. Uh, as you're joining, give us a hello and a God bless you. If you're joining us with Church One, Charlotte, if you're joining us through other uh, watch parties, give us a God bless you and a hello that we might give you a shout out right back. To Shiloh Hampton, God bless you all. So good to see you. Amen. Hallelujah. Anybody glad to be in the number one more time this afternoon? Uh, if you are, come on, let's enter into praise and worship together. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Uh, we're going to sing to the glory of God. Amen. Uh, let's sing. Anybody happy today? Tyrone Gilmore. God bless you. Shimon Williams. God bless you. Anybody happy today? Hallelujah. You make me happy. You make me whole. You take the pain away, so in love with you. Sing. Come on, sing it with me. I can't hear you. Come on, let's sing it together. Let's sing it again. Say, you make me happy. You make me whole. You take the pain away, so in love with you. Come on, let's sing together. You make, you make me whole. You take the pain. Take the pain. So in love with you. you Hallelujah. You Come on, put those hands together. You make me whole. You, you take the pain. So in love. Come on, sing. Because everything about you is covered so my wrongs. Come on, let's sing it. Covers on my wrong. Your life. Come on, let's put those glad hands together. I belong. I belong to you, Lord. I belong to you, God. Hallelujah. Come on, let's sing it. You. 
you take, take the pain so in love with you. this afternoon oh we praise his wonderful name yes we do god bless you good afternoon your brother pastor charles carter the church one charlotte family we say good god bless you to you those that are joining us from far and near god bless you brother trip jenkins david amaker god bless you good to see you as always i'm your brother pastor charles carter church one charlotte family in our stay-at-home studios missionary lashawn the carter Layla and Kayla in the house, our brothers and sisters from far and near. Vel Byron Gill, God bless you. Good to see you. We thank God for all those that are in jo that are joining with us and that are tuned in this afternoon. Grab your Bibles, Amen. Grab Mark, the second chapter, Amen. Mark the second chapter. I'm going to be reading. From the NIV version, Mark the second chapter, verses 21 and 22. We're coming from the Gospels this afternoon. Amen. Mark the second chapter, verses 21 and 22. I'm going to read King James, then I'm going to jump over to the NIV. This is going to be a very familiar passage of scripture, but as always, God's going to breathe new life. Amen. Come on, somebody say new life. Thank you, Jesus. Mark 2, 21 and 22. It reads, no man also soweth a piece of new cloth on an old garment. Else the new piece that filled it up 
taketh away from the old and the rent is made worse. And no man putteth new wine into old bottles else the new wine doth burst the bottles and the wine is spilled and the bottles will be marred. But new wine must be put into new bottles. Amen. NIV says it this way. No one sews a patch of unshrunk cloth on an old garment. Otherwise, the new piece will pull away from the old, making the tear worse. And no one pours new wine into old wine skins. Otherwise, the wine will burst the skins and both the wine and the wine skins will be ruined. No, they pour new wine into new wine skins. Come on, somebody. Thank God for the word on this afternoon. Amen. Come on, somebody say patches and skins, patches and skins. Yes, indeed. All my vacation Bible school folk, all of my uh, Bible study, all of my uh, 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 nav to uh, to uh, 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 discipleship study. People know the passage of the patches and skins. Amen. Mark, the second chapter is very interesting. Jesus is about doing the work that he was sent here to do uh, during this time. And the Gospels, according to Mark, chronicle it very well. I want you to note today that somebody is entering a new next level. Amen. Come on, somebody say it. I'm entering a new next level. Yes, indeed. Not just a new level, but a new next level. Yes, indeed. Amen. Uh, but I must warn you, new next levels require a new way of doing things come on somebody say new 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 there's nothing like uh, something new uh, but it can be a bit of a challenge uh, when you get something new and uh, it requires uh, a different way of being handled amen Brian Young God bless you Alisa Brown God bless you good to see you all as you're reading this passage of scripture you're going to see some things that are very interesting. Uh, that's why in many instances, uh, uh, as we're talking about this new next level, it's important to realize that this new next level requires a new way of doing things. Amen. Uh, what am I talking about? That's why in many instances, uh, many efforts that are being made in many different arenas, doesn't matter what it is, whether it be uh, uh, in civil justice arenas, whether it be uh, in church arenas, uh, where, whether it be in your personal life, whether it be in your professional life, uh, these instances uh, that we're realizing that these efforts that are being made in many areas are not working. Somebody needs to be honest with me this afternoon uh, and, and, and testify and say, you know what? Uh, I'm noticing uh, that even with some newness going on around me, uh, it appears that the old way of doing things is not working. Amen. What am I talking about? What used to work uh, is not going to work in this new next level. We can't keep doing things the old way expecting new results lord jesus we can't keep doing things uh, the old way in a new thing okay come on somebody's getting on board right there come on somebody say new thing yes indeed uh here's what's very interesting to me i'm gonna mess with some of my uh, seasoned folk here amen some of my young at heart people amen um somebody can remember uh, there used to be uh, uh, these envelopes. Uh, if we're talking about uh, uh, doing uh, new things in a new way and thinking about how old ways uh, don't work in a new thing, uh, what is a good example of that? 
Somebody can remember inner office communication envelopes, amen. Uh, uh, some of our uh, young folk, y'all going to get a little education here, amen. Uh, God bless you all. Thank you for joining, amen. Brother T, uh, God bless you. It's good to see you. Uh, now, many of us might remember uh, inner office communication envelopes. Uh, if you've been around a while. You might remember in an office communication envelope. What am I talking about? Uh, the, these were utilized in the 70s and 80s. And what they were is these, these big, um, almost orangish yellow looking envelopes. And they were a little thicker uh, than an average envelope because they were meant to be reused. And you didn't seal them up in many instances. What you would do is you'd put a uh, uh, something that you had typed up on a typewriter. Amen. Come on, somebody. Uh, I'm going way back on you. Uh, you would type something that you had uh, typed up in a typewriter and you would put it in that envelope. And it had this piece of uh, fabric cord that you would wrap around two little spindles that would hold the envelope closed. And uh, it had a bunch of lines on it and you would write uh, who it was from and who it was to and you would put it in a certain um, basket that would be transmitted throughout your company, maybe on a different to a different floor, uh, maybe even to a different building. But before email, come on, somebody, there were inter office communication envelopes. Lord, have mercy. Uh, somebody's laughing right now that you're telling me I would have to type something up and then put it in an envelope and put a, a wrap cord around it to seal it and put it in a basket and wait for somebody to come get that envelope to take it a couple floors down or to another building uh, yes that was an old way of communicating amen uh well i want you to know today as ludicrous as that sounds that was the method that worked at that point let me come on up in the 80s a little bit maybe you got fancy and got you a fax machine and uh you had to maybe type something out and when you would type it out uh you would put it in the fax machine and now you didn't have to wait on inner office envelopes uh but you could uh, uh just fax it to someone amen and uh if you had one of those old school fax machines uh, the paper would come out on these rolls, amen. And as they would roll the paper out, you would have to flatten that paper out, uh, so that you could read what was on it. Didn't come out on a nice fancy flat sheet of paper like we're maybe accustomed to now. Uh, but, uh, even then, I can hear somebody saying, my goodness, you're telling me I still gotta type something up? And uh, print it out or type it up and um, uh, pull it out of the typewriter and fax it to someone. Uh, when now I use email, I use um, instant messenger, I use all different manner of communication to share documents. I know it seems crazy. I know it seems out of place. Uh, but what we need to realize is that method worked then, but now it is sorely out of date, antiquated, and it does not allow the individual using this technology to keep up with modern technology. Lord have mercy. Somebody uh, can see where we're going today. Say new thing. Amen. Somebody say new next level. Uh, what am I getting at? Well, uh, I'm as crazy as that sounds, uh, uh, it's, it's, it's to do business with a inner office envelope in 2020. Amen. And, uh, as crazy as it sounds, um, uh, to uh, send a fax when you could just send an email amen as crazy as it sounds uh to send a fax when you could just easily snap a picture and send it uh to whomever that you're trying to get that document to uh, i want you to know that it's crazy to keep trying to do uh things the old way when this new next level that god has given you is requiring a new way of doing things come on somebody come on somebody say new 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 yes indeed uh new it requires a new way of doing things I uh, know uh, that sounds crazy, but uh, many of you have maybe seen someone uh, get a promotion and uh, they get promoted uh, from working uh, a part of a team to potentially managing that team. Uh, how crazy would it sound for that individual to keep trying to do things the way they used to do when they were 
part of the team now that they're the manager of the team. God bless you, Brother Derek Henderson. Good to see you, sir. Uh, it's crazy, yes, it is, uh, to sit there and watch someone that's been promoted talking about, well, uh, it's, it's five o'clock. It's uh, time for me to go. Uh, you know, I got I to clock out. No, that's the old way you used to do things. Now you've got new responsibilities. You've got new things that need to be done with that promotion. Yes, you do. You can't just clock out at five o'clock clock and expect somebody else to handle it otherwise your department is going to fall apart and they're going to come looking for you amen uh, you can clock out at five if you want they'll call you at 501 asking where you are amen and why what you have been entrusted to is falling apart lord have mercy i know that sounds crazy I know that sounds uh, so easy to grasp, uh, but what God is trying to tell us today uh, in this book of Mark, the second chapter, 21st and 22nd verse, is that we have to understand that there are new challenges with this new next level that God is moving you to. Yes, indeed, uh, there are new challenges. Huh? The enemy is cunning in this day and age, amen, uh, to the point that he thrives off any publicity amen uh, uh the the enemy is cunning uh, at the point where it feeds off your outrage amen and no matter uh how much out how outraged you get it uses it to get the message out amen doesn't matter what we're talking about whether it's your job whether it's uh current events whether it's the the work that the enemy is doing in the spirit realm you have to understand that getting outraged is not enough anymore amen uh you got to understand that uh just uh, uh doing things things uh, in a way that used to work is not going to get it this time. Amen. I need somebody to pull out their uh, gospel according to Wally. Amen. You know, uh, uh, many of you've got a whole lot of time on your hands and maybe you're not going out to the movies as much. As much. Uh, go ahead and pull out the movie Wally. And it was funny how God will share stuff with you. <laughs> Amen. No matter what uh, the, the situation is. And many of you know the, uh, the movie Wally was this little robot that had been tasked to clean up. And man had damaged the earth to the point where uh, endless consumption had created endless piles of junk where nothing could grow. And Wally had been left on the planet and uh, because he wasn't taken along with those that were sailing on what would be like an ARC-esque cruise ship of sorts. And uh, even though he had been left behind, he had a task to do and he continued to do it no matter what came his way. Amen. Uh, uh, but what was interesting, uh, that's a whole message in itself right there. But the, where, where God began to talk uh, was when you saw the people on that cruise ship, they had become overcome by the conveniences that technology had provided for them. That people didn't even walk anymore. They, they kind of rode and hovered around on these little hover chairs, you know, and uh, everything that they needed was brought to them. And uh, uh, everything that they could potentially think about was put at arm's reach. In many instances, to even lift an arm or a finger was too much. Uh, they got to the point where it had to pretty much even be being brought to their mouth even when it came to eating. Lord have mercy. God bless you, Brother Charles Robertson. Good to see you. Uh, God told me, he said, listen, this is the state of Christians uh, in this day and age. Amen. Uh, if it's not convenient, if it's not laid to the point where you don't even have to lift a finger uh you're not gonna do it amen uh you're gonna become old and bloated and and not even able to hold your own weight because you have gotten in a posture of getting everything handed to you lord jesus reginald uh, and patricia clark god bless you good to see you amen god says listen here on this new next level you can't be like those individuals in that movie uh on 
uh, on that movie Wally, you've got to be able to realize as things change, uh, you've got to adapt and move with it. Amen. You can't put a new patch of unshrunk cloth on an old garment. No, indeed. Uh, you can't put uh, new wine in wine skins. That's somebody being lazy right there. Amen. Because uh, the more I think about it, a wine skin is something that had to be prepared. You didn't just go to the store and buy a wine skin. When this passage was written, you had to make that thing. And I can see someone trying to cut corners and say, well, you know what? We got new wine. Let's just put it in that empty wine skin and we'll be all right. Amen. Uh, I can I can see somebody saying, you know what? I know there's a certain type of uh, process I need to put this patch through first. Uh, but let me just cut corners and just use it because it looks nice and new. And uh, I'll just put it on that piece of old torn clothing uh, and it'll do for now. Amen. That sound I can. I can hear uh, somebody cutting corners, amen, but in this new next level, y'all, the new next level that God has thrust you in maybe before you even realized it was coming your way, you've got to get ready and you got to get ready fast. You've got to get yourself in a point and a position to understand what the enemy's doing and no matter what shape he's doing it in and take Take, take time uh, to get yourself ready and counteract each and everything the enemy tries to do uh, and tries to put in your way. Rather than taking note that this is a new day and a next level, and I've got to get a plan to handle this new next level, uh, we uh, are cutting corners. In many instances, even in this day and age, God's constantly trying to let us know I'm doing a new thing. I need you to get on board. I need you to get ready and I need you to get in line with what I'm doing in your life and in the world as a whole. Even before this pandemic, uh, the truth of the matter is uh, just like that inner office envelope that's out of date. Many of our efforts are out of date. Amen. Uh, imagine someone uh, trying to market to individuals in a mall when very few people go to malls anymore. Imagine someone getting all of these efforts together for places that are half empty. Amen. Oh, I'm going to mess with somebody's spirit right here. Imagine somebody putting all this effort into church buildings that are half empty. Lord have mercy. God was trying to tell us. He said, look, uh, I'll let you know uh, that doing things the old way, uh, trying even now, we're trying to get back to normal, amen, uh, to try to get back to the way things used to be done. Uh, when God is saying, listen, uh, these places aren't half empty for no reason. Obviously, uh, something that we're doing is missing the mark. Yes, indeed, I'm going to mess with somebody who just spent a million dollars on your sound system and don't even spend $20 on feeding young people somewhere. Lord have mercy. I'm messing with your spirit. Yes, I am uh, with somebody that's busy uh, trying to get on television with your ministry calling that evangelism and won't even go out to that tore up neighborhood that your church is in lord jesus oh folk gonna they gonna clock they gonna clock out now y'all they gonna they gonna they gonna log out i'm sorry i guess we gotta hurry up and wrap up quick but where we're going with this is making old inner office communication envelope efforts in a time where god is saying i'm doing a new thing I'm doing something next level and you, if you don't pay attention, I'm going to move right out from under you. Lord have mercy. God said, listen, you didn't take the first hint. So I shut things down altogether. Now that things are shut down, uh, people are realizing, okay, maybe we can't get back to normal. Maybe we can make us a new normal, amen, uh, which is basically just trying to do what we used to do in some kind of new fashion of doing things. No, no, God is trying to let us know uh, that we can't put new wine in old wineskins. No, indeed. God's got a new thing uh, that he's doing in your life and you can't approach it with the old way of doing things. Lord Jesus, are you an old wineskin? Oh my goodness. Here's time for self-examination. Am I a, an old wineskin? Lord have mercy. Uh, what is an old wineskin? 
Am I dried up and brittle? Not very useful? Might look okay, but when it's time to go to work, I'm the first thing that's falling apart and breaking when something new is introduced. Lord have mercy. Am I an old wineskin? Oh, well, let's move on uh, before everybody uh, logs out here. Uh, well, uh, are you maybe you can say, no, I'm not a old wineskin. I'm with uh, doing things new ways and I'm with doing things the current way and uh, and I'm with uh, modern technology and I'm with uh, whatever's new. I'm going to get on board with it. Amen. Whether it's good or not, I'm going to get on board. Now, if that's you, uh, you need to ask yourself, are you a new unshrunk patch for an old garment? Lord, have mercy. Uh, are you making things worse by putting new stuff over top of something old without fully understanding the old environment that you're going into? Lord, have mercy. Uh, are you trying to force feed stuff that's new just for the sake of doing it? Here's something interesting that I notice a lot of times people can be ready for modern technology. And in many instances, they will try to uh, utilize it on old platforms that are not capable of handling what is new where where am i going with this uh let me let me see you try to get 4g or even 5g service on that old flip phone that star tech flip phone that you had back in 1989 come on i'm messing with somebody's spirit right there you know you used to love that flip phone yes indeed but here's the interesting thing what's new cannot be utilized in that old phone because it doesn't possess what's necessary to be able to receive what it is that's being transmitted. Uh, it's got out of date uh, antennas, amen? It's got out of date technology inside of it that can't even handle the speed in which uh, it's trying uh, to be uh, sent to it. Lord have mercy. Uh, I believe somebody can see where we're going. If you're a new patch today, you can't just slap what's new over top of something that's torn. Why? Because scripture says it this way. Uh, uh, even if it looks nice for a minute, uh, it's going to begin to shrink over time and make the tear that it was supposed to save even worse. Lord, have mercy. You can't just be uh, just because it's new don't mean it's what God would have us to do for this new next level that he's moving you to. Amen. Uh, you've got to understand that uh, in this passage, Mark, the second chapter. Mark is covering Jesus. You'll look and you'll see this second chapter. Jesus heals a paralytic individual. Uh, he calls Levi uh, in this second chapter. Levi uh, was one that was operating amongst the tax collectors and the sinners. Amen. Uh, there's a passage and a, and a, a, a title for a, a message called dinner with sinners amen don't nobody steal that now let me preach it first amen but uh as jesus called levi uh the point of that uh being made reference in this passage is levi was in some of those places that church folk don't like to go lord have mercy uh levi was a part of some groups and he was in some areas that uh that that were not where the pharisees like to go even the disciples of John the Baptist at that time, uh, there were different conversations that went on uh, further on in the second chapter of Mark that we'll get to in a minute. Uh, but what was interesting is uh, Jesus called Levi out from where he was amen uh here's what's interesting for all my folk that are busy witnessing the folk and they're making a bigger influence on you than you are on them jesus called levi out from where he was yes he did will you if you're sharing with some new group you're with if you're coming into contact with new people at a new job i hear you saying uh when in rome do as the romans do but jesus is trying to let us know right here 
idea uh, as this next level, as this next new thing that he is giving us, we've got to make sure we're keeping our focus in line. Yes, indeed. He called Levi out from where he was. And even as Levi began to talk with Jesus, Jesus uh, and Levi invited him back to have dinner in some of those same places uh, that Levi was from. Jesus didn't get uptight. Jesus didn't get worried about it. Those were the very people that Jesus had been sent to save. Amen. Jesus even states as the Pharisees begin to act pious. See, you got to understand folk that are sideline folk. They don't do no work. They just watch other people work. And they didn't have the very miracles to show for themselves like Jesus did. So they couldn't question whether or not he was for real or not. Uh, but they could try to wax eloquent and try to ask around what they were really trying to say. Y'all know how folk do. Uh, are you sure about that, dog? Um, they're not asking you if they're sh if you're sure. What they're saying is, you know, I really don't approve of what you're doing. <laughs> uh, you know, here is where the Pharisees uh, begin to ask questions. Jesus says it like this. Uh, you don't send a doctor to the well. You send a doctor to those that are sick and infirmed. Lord have mercy. Math, uh, Mark, the second chapter talks about Levi. And then after talking about Levi, they get into a conversation uh, after he's called Levi to follow him. They begin to talk and begin to uh, have theological discussions about when it's time to fast. The Pharisees were fasting. Amen. Even the disciples of John the Baptist were fasting. Yes, they were. And they said, well, wait a minute. Uh, Jesus doesn't look like uh, you and your disciples are fasting right now. What's up with that? Uh, you know, I, I hear Jesus saying, you know what? Um, y'all are worried about when the time to fast is, uh, when the time not to celebrate is, when the very reason you should be celebrating is right amongst you. Lord have mercy. Uh, he goes on to say, uh, my people aren't fasting because they're spending time with the son of the living God right now. And there'll come a time when they'll need to fast because I'll go away to send a comforter. But as of right now, they are going to eat and celebrate with me. Lord have mercy. Then abruptly, the text turns. Jesus begins to talk about the patches and the skins. It began to uh, make me realize Jesus is saying, you know what, man? Y'all really don't get what's going on here. Amen. Y'all are missing out. Y'all are busy trying to do things the old way when something new, the very New Testament is standing amongst you. Oh, I got, I, I'm going somewhere with this uh, and I want you to hang with me just another moment. Uh, the reason uh, that, that, that Jesus turns right here at the 21st and 22nd scripture uh, is because he's trying to get them to understand much of what we're putting our hands to much of what we're doing trying to get back to normal amen much of what we're doing trying to create a new normal which is just the old normal on top of uh something uh that's different amen uh the more we keep trying to do these things jesus is saying you've got to get yourself in a position to receive all things new oh my goodness he makes all things new yes he does amen and if he makes all things new that means he's not leaving you behind unless you keep clawing and scratching trying to go back to what he took you from lord have mercy well man you talked about it enough what do i need to do amen what do i need to do to be ready for this next new level that god has already put me in uh, because I, I can see you fighting over the last several days and weeks and months. I can see you trying to handle things being done in a different way. Oh, uh, but I want you to know today, uh, just as Jesus changes gears in the 21st and 22nd verse, uh, we've got to change gears and realize that new wine needs new wine skins. Amen. Uh, that's churchy. Uh, that's, that's scripture. Yes. But what does that mean for me right now? Amen. A new container uh, must be made 
for a familiar consumable. Amen. Uh, wine was a familiar consumable. Uh, it was something that uh, if you laid it on a table, no one would question what it is. Amen. I want you to know today as you share the good news with somebody, you got to get that thing in a new container. Amen. Uh, you got to use what you've got. You got to use what God has given you uh, so that uh, where you're sharing it and what you're doing or uh, when you're sharing it is being received and not being destroyed. That passage says when you're trying to use an old wine skin, it wastes the wine and it destroys the old wine skin. Uh, we are in a posture now where we're just taking it or leaving it. Uh, if we mess over folk, so be it. If, if we just leave things like they are, as long as I can keep doing and keep going, I'm going to keep going and keep doing. No, I want you to know God is interrupting the way you're doing things. Uh, on that job that you got a promotion on. Uh, in your personal life, uh, wherever the changes are taking place that God is doing. You can't do things the or oh, you got to get a new package. Yes, you do. Amen. In a day and age where we're just used to endlessly consuming. Like those individuals in that movie, Wally, uh, we're not consuming to the extent where it's being received only and nothing's being done with it. This new container means as what you're receiving, God is putting it in your hands for a reason. Amen. Whatever and whatever places he's putting you in, he's putting us there for a reason. You can't get ready to do things like you did before because that's an old wineskin way of doing things. Amen. Oh, uh, well, uh, what else do I need to do? Uh, you need to know your environment and conform in order to fix the tear that you've been brought in for, whether you know it or not. God is putting you some places to fix some tears. Are you getting there and becoming a part of the problem or a part of the solution? You've got to get yourself ready. Amen. You've got to get yourself pre shrunk. What that means is you got to be ready to endure some stuff just because you got the will. You might not have the skill yet. Amen. Just because you think it's a good idea and it's fancy, shiny and new doesn't mean uh, that uh, it's bad, but it means we got to prepare ourselves to utilize it. So God gets it's the glory and so that this new next level doesn't get messed up torn up and we got to start back over at square one no we got to get ourselves in position y'all we got to get ourselves in position why because this next level that god has given us he's given it to us for a reason amen he's given it to us for a reason that we might be able to be a conduit for his blessings for someone in need. He's given it to us for a reason. That we might be a blessing. And not be wasted wine on the ground. There are so many in this day and age. That are attempting. To use. Whatever it is they have. In a way in which God has not ordained it to be used. And as they're doing that. They're causing themselves to become a statistic. They're becoming wasted wine. They're trying to get upset and outraged and trying to figure out something to do. And as they make all that rage to a point where they're not making wise decisions, they become a part of the problem, not a prob part of the solution. They become a statistic of those lost rather than recognized for the very things uh, that God sent them to do. Look at those. We've talked about this before. Those that have been recognized over time operated strategically. Those that just got excited and tried to do stuff in many instances are recognized as a statistic. Names are rarely even known. What their initial intent really was has gotten eaten up and swallowed up by someone who's operating strategically. Now they're using them to get their results taken care of rather than the individual realizing. I got to look at this a new way. This patch that God has given me. I can't just throw this thing on this problem uh, because it's going to make the problem worse. That's why much of what you're seeing now is becoming exponentially worse because we got new patches on old problems. Lord Jesus, you got to realize, beloved, that God is trying to get us in the very position 
to take on what's next and what's new in our lives. Hallelujah. Oh, my goodness. Why don't you ask yourself today? Ask yourself. God. What is it that you would have me to do? God. How would you have me to go about doing things? What is it? And where is it that you would have me to do what you would have me to do? I'm not going to take this new next level that you have given me and use it for naught. Waste it on the ground. Mess up the very area that you sent me to fix because I'm overzealous and trying to do stuff just to do it. Father, help us today. God, you've got a new next level for each and every one under the sound of this transmission. And we're ready to receive that new next level. And take it, as scripture says, from glory to glory. We don't want to keep repeating things over. Having the same problems in just a new year. Same old problems same old arguments same old issues same old worries same old discouragements why don't you ask God today say take take everything I don't want it Tell God today, say, I just want you. Just want you. Yeah, yeah. Just want you. Say, I just want. Just want you. Oh. If you want Jesus today, ask him into your heart. Ask him today to help me figure out this new next level that you're giving me, God. I don't want to waste yet another moment. Let's pray. Father, touch somebody today. Reach them right where they are. Give them what they stand in the need of. Cause them not to be tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine, every new thing they see online, every new post that comes their way to try to get them excited. God, cause them to seek you. God, cause us to seek you daily. God calls us to be pre-shrunk, made ready for the area that you've placed us in. We're looking to you, God, right now. That you might touch, that you might work in us, that we might operate in a strategic manner greater than ever before. We thank you right now. Now, if you don't know Christ is your savior, what do I need to be saved from, man? you have to answer that if you have to ask that question you definitely need to pray this prayer scripture says man cannot even know he needs a savior lest the holy spirit prick their heart holy spirit touch somebody right now who's using every effort that they come about to try to find meaning and still coming up empty I want you to know today you're trying to put new wine in an old wine skin. You're just trying to find something new, trying to put it over the same old problem instead of letting God pre shrink it first that it can fix it, that it might last. God says, I want to give you fruit that remains, not to get rich today and down tomorrow. Why don't you receive him today? say father I know I'm a sinner I believe that you died for my sins save me right now I confess with my mouth and I believe in my heart that you died for my sins was crucified buried and rose again now you stand with all power in your hands and I thank you right now that I'm saved Bible says whosoever call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved come on say take me 
I'm yours. Hallelujah. I just want you. If you prayed that prayer, why don't you get in contact with us that we might begin the discipleship process? Ask him, say, I just want you. Take me, I'm yours. Hallelujah. Oh, I just want you. Just want you, God. Take me. I'm yours. Hallelujah. God bless you. We'll see you next week. I just want you. Have a blessed week.